There's no doubt about it. Chinese brand San Martin, or San Martin, however you say it, offers the most impressive build quality that I've seen for the money. In many ways, their budget pieces put larger brands to shame. As such, they've rightly received a lot of attention from reviewers, me included. However, they've always come with one big caveat. The vast majority of their repertoire consists of homages, which are glorified clones of famous watches. This includes rebadged copies of the likes of Rolex, Tudor, Omega, Seiko, and many more. In fact, there aren't really any original designs to speak of. Until now, perhaps? They recently emailed asking to send me some more watches, and I got straight to the point. Do you have any watch designs that are not homages? To my surprise, they provided a rather unexpected response. They did have some custom designs that I could take a look at. Could these be the holy grail of affordable watches? Original designs with the ridiculously good build quality that San Martin's known for. That was a proposition too tempting to ignore. I chose two models from the links they provided and they shipped them across. By the end of this video, I'm hoping to have answered two questions. Number one, have these watches been overhyped or are they just as good as reviewers say? And number two, was San Martin lying to me? To find out the answers, stay tuned through this quick message from our sponsor. WatchCrunch is a new platform made specifically for better watch discussions. It was built by a group of fellow watch nerds who were tired of the negativity and flex culture propagated on other platforms. <laughs> Instagram. <coughs> they wanted to create something more inviting, friendly, and productive. Unlike many old school forums that look straight out of the stone age, WatchCrunch has a slick interface that allows for an intuitive and digestible experience. No, not that type of digestible, that type of digestible. On WatchCrunch, you'll find loads of community-driven posts, including reviews, polls, articles, videos, and discussions, as well as handy tools to help you customize your experience. You can select what brands you're interested in, as well as receive unique badges and perks based on your contributions to the platform. New features are being added all the time, and it's free to use. What are you waiting for? Click the link in the video description. Give it a try, and let me know what you think. Here we have three San Martin watches. The Gilt Dial Diver on the left I purchased with my own money last year, whilst the remaining two were those sent in by the San Martin official store on AliExpress. The non-homages. You'll find them all affiliate linked in the video description for your convenience. They were happy for me to retain full creative control, so you'll be getting the full picture. Currently, the SN004G typically hovers between about 150 and 250 pounds. The SN045 is about the same, whilst the SN029 sells for more like 100 to 150. Let's begin with the materials and construction. All three of these utilize the industry standard 316L stainless steel and feel very sturdy considering the low price tag. They all have screwed case rears, securing the watches to an advertised 200 meters and each house Seiko automatic movements. The two bezeled models are kitted out with excellent quality solid link bracelets with four micro adjustment holes a pop, whilst the third instead features an equally good fabric strap with dual layered construction and steel appendages. The two models provided by San Martin are up to the lofty standards that were set with the first watch I purchased. The precision and delicacy with which these have been executed is truly remarkable. While the B-Blasted watch isn't very complex, the surface texture is superbly consistent and the cutouts have been undertaken very accurately with sharp angular corners. Both also have highly grippy crowns, while the SN045G has a detailed shark engraving on the rear with a matte surface surrounding it. No joke, all three of these watches easily feel like others that I've seen retailing for way over 500 quid. All also feature scratch-resistant sapphire crystals, with two of the three featuring decent anti-reflective coatings. The bezel actions are excellent, with satisfying clicks, no noticeable backplay, and perfect alignment across the board. Are you listening, Seiko? Perhaps the only area where these watches fall short is the dials. It seems San Martin haven't quite landed on a winning formula with these yet, as each is rather plain, with flat textureless colors and generic font choices for the accompanying text. They each look a little dull and could do with an injection of personality. I think someone at the company needs to pick an identity and run with it, so that they can start to discover a style that defines the brand. The array of different logos used across these three watches alone showcases an absence of this clear direction. Something they have got a firm grip on is quality control. Many of their Chinese competitors produce comparably spec watches for similar prices or less. However, purchasing one of these can feel like a dice roll due to the lackluster QC. Conversely, that on display with these San Martin watches is better than most major watch brands that I've come across. No signs of dust or dirt under the crystal, no stiff bracelet links, 
no scratches, at least when they were new, and great alignment of both bezels and markers. In this regard, all three have surpassed my expectations, especially for the money. In hindsight though, it's no surprise. They've got a video on their store page documenting every part of the production process. And it turns out that they've got a very rigorous procedure, which includes spot checking their watches through microscopes to ensure there are no imperfections. I highly doubt most large mass produced watch brands implement such a deep inspection procedure at anywhere near this price point. In recent times, even giants like Seiko have been known to release four figure watches that frequently feature blatant errors that are visible with the naked eye. To me, that's unforgivable. Even the boxes here are better. These San Martins arrived in highly secure utility style boxes with thick padding and an assortment of high quality accessories, including silicon bands and spring bar tools that surpass those in my watch repair kit. Overall, this results in a final product that feels at least two tiers above the likes of a similarly styled Pagani design. This all sounds great, right? But what's the catch? Well, I'm glad you asked. It turns out that San Martin may not have been 100% transparent with me. The original SN004 that I purchased, I already knew that one wasn't original. It was based on a classic Rolex design from the 1950s, which I was cool with given that that Rolex is impossible to find in new condition or for attainable prices. However, the other two, the two they sent me, <laughs> turns out they're not quite as they promised. As I pointed out in my dive watch roundup, the SN045 does have a rather unique stubby case shape and a sleek bracelet. So I thought the dial looked familiar. Well, it appears to have been copy and pasted from a Seiko 1970 Captain Willard with an identical layout and handset, which would explain it. I suspected that the other one may have looked similar to several other watches with that minimalist fixed bezel design. Unfortunately, I didn't realize how close until a commenter pointed out that this was likely a clone of the Unimatic U2, which looks the same, just a bit thicker. Weirdly, that model appears to be shipping later in 2022, whereas this San Martin is already available for purchase. Unimatic is not a brand I'm familiar with, so I'm unsure precisely who copied who in this situation. On at least one of those counts though, they weren't completely honest with me. It's a step in the right direction nonetheless, as there are some original elements. Though I'm sure that route will be difficult to justify, given that their profitability may suffer, as is evident from this quote in one of their earliest emails to me. That's the second question sorted. To answer the first question though, no, I don't think San Martin is overrated as such. More so, I think the consensus needs shifting. I think there's a little too much focus on these watches resembling a certain Rolex model for way less money, and not enough focus on how remarkable the fit and finish and QC are for the retail price. I'm not talking about the raw specifications here. As I mentioned in the past, it's easy to cram high specs into dirt cheap watches to make them look good on paper. Instead, Sam Martin's managed to claw itself into a position analogous to modern realistic CGI. Sitting in an uncanny valley where luxury seems just past the horizon, yet may always remain slightly out of reach. If you want to see the full dive watch roundup featuring these San Martin watches, then click the video on screen now. And remember, all options I mentioned today are linked in the video description.